forms of hate experience name calling the usual faggot puff bag nutty grab like goth like emo and that's kind of not even without even speaking to me they'll just see me and go oh grab another one is go back home where you came from well this is my home i live here where else can i go you get when you go into a shop and you pay for something they take the money off you and then give the change to the person with you you know because they don't see you you know uh, I'm there, I'm 20 stone plus, I'm three feet wide, and people don't see me. You know, it's quite ridiculous. You know, what else can you say? You know, I'm the invisible man. <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Um, that's a good question. That, that's, I'd never thought of that. Um, probably transgender. Um, that is of the male to female variety. I I suffer from mental mental health problems and and it probably occurred, I've had disability all my life and it probably been worse because of my because of my my mental health problems. It brought on my mental health problems a bit worse. A survivor. Yeah, that's probably the answer. I'm a survivor. I uh, had polio almost from birth, and I grew up with that. The kind of things I've experienced over the years are like physical, verbal, kind of a bit, a bit psychological in a way. When I've been out with my boyfriend and stuff, sometimes you forget like in a public place, it's not as accepting to hold hands, to be affectionate. You can feel awkward, especially if you do it without realising and you see people staring or kids pointing to the parents and sort of asking questions, mummy, why is that boy holding that other boy like that and stuff. The main experience, my worst experience, was being out on the night out in Braunston Gate with some friends, um, was leaving the club, getting ready to leave. I'd had a couple of drinks, I was quite merry. This straight lad had said a few comments, me being drunk, not sensing how this situation could have escalated as quick as it did. I said something back before I knew it, I was being attacked and at hospital, having to give police statements the days after. Um, the lad was took to court, he was prosecuted for it, for a common assault and I think some sort of homophobic abuse. I felt quite hurt, upset, and angry towards Leicester as such let down by the security on Broadston Gate, bouncers and stuff. It's a mixture of feelings, really. I have experienced a load of different forms of hate. Um, if, like, um, like bullying on the bus, um, bullying in the bus queue, bullying at the train station, um, online bullying, but probably one of my worst feelings is when I was threatened to be killed. They make me feel very low and quite suicidal at times, and I have tried to take my own life on several di different occasions. Overdoses, jumping off a, off a roof of a building, um, cutting myself, so I, um, several different times, several different kinds of taking my life. The perpetrators are normally people who don't have the empathy and don't have the understanding of the damage it, it had done to people. There was one incident in particular where I went shopping um, in my local supermarket. And as you know, when, when we're all queuing up to get to the till, I just happened to pick something up, I turned around, I saw a till was free, so I went straight to it. I hadn't realised that people were queuing. You're supposed to have a single queue to get to the tills. I put my basket down and a man came from the other queue, pushed me and said, people like you are just trying to take over our country. Um, and he threw my basket away and pushed me out of the way and told other people to come and stand there in the queue. And the verbal abuse 
just continued. Um, he wouldn't stop talking. Sad thing was no one said anything. Um, it was a simple mistake. All he had to say is, excuse me, there's a queue here and I would have moved to the back of the queue. Anyone can make a mistake, but just because I dress like this didn't give him the right to hurl abuse at me. And so I, I was really upset. I was very shaken. Um, I, I could have left, but there was something I really needed for my son and I had to pay for it. So I paid for it, came home. And I think I was really, really upset. I was very shaken and I just started to cry because I hadn't really done anything wrong. I didn't deserve that. I've had abuse from 16 year olds up to 80 year olds. A short time ago, I went round to a hardware shop about two streets away from here and I was sitting outside the shop and a, a group of youths come along and it was my power chair I was in. It was switched on and one of them grabbed the control and started manoeuvring my chair without uh, direction. He just pulled the lever in any direction. They were about 18 year old, you know, they were... Uh, I suppose in their mind they were just playing, but in my mind they could have killed me because we were on sitting on the main road. They seemed to think it was their right to do as they pleased to me, you know. Left me very disturbed, very worked up. But there's nothing much you can do about it because they're young and they're gone. I've always been brave enough to face up to the cowards that pick on you. I've always never stood down, never, never stepped back. The result being that people think you're angry or you're nasty. It's not, it's defence. All you're doing is stopping people from hurting you. You, you can't imagine how much it takes to stand there and say, I'm hurt. I've, I've never told that. I've ne this is the first time I've ever spoken to anybody like this. Yeah, it's uh, it's very hard to be me, and some people think you're ignorant, and it's not ignorance; it's defence, and it's a very important defence because the minute it goes down, you are so vulnerable. Every time we do with it, I just, I just ignore it and just like just hang out with my other friends as well. And like, a lot of my other friends kind of like have experienced that kind of thing as well. Sometimes we'll just talk and like laugh about it, like going like, oh, this guy called me a, a grub the other day or something. Like, but we just laugh about it really, like kind of. Like, that's another thing as well. They'll kind of just say, oh, you're into your shouty music or things like that. And I'm like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> and then I'll just listen to some like music. It's, like I was saying though, like, if someone's kind of like, it doesn't make me want to change, it just makes you want to even be more that way. People think travelers, especially travelling girls, they're at home, they clean up, they don't work, they, they're always on the benefits. Um, me, on the other hand, I've got a job, I work every week, I am on the Youth Commission, I do all sponsors for things and I help out charities in the best way I can. I think Travellers is targeted really for the media. The media's portrayed Travellers as we're all, we're all the same, we're all, 
we all throw rubbish and everything everywhere and we all steal and we all do things badly. Not everybody's the same. But what the media portray, everybody reads, so everybody get all travellers get targeted for what the media portray you as. I think I'm a victim of hate crime because of who I am, what I look like, and just my general lifestyle. I've had people shout oi tranny and fag every rude name you can think of. If I'm out and I'm approaching the, a car or my house, I will have the key in my hand a good 20 or more feet before I get to the door in case I need to make a quick entrance and I will be totally aware of what's going around me. You tend to be on edge all the time you're out. The advice I'd give to anyone that kind of, you know, looks at someone who's getting a hard time, like, don't change the way you are at all. Just, if someone's calling you a name and just saying, oh, you're a greb, just say, yeah, I am. Like, don't change the way you're at all because someone, because I know everyone's kind of saying you should look more normal or you should cut your hair. Like, don't change anything at all. Just kind of stay the way you are. Because when you get older, you, you, you'll find people like you and, like, there's nothing different about you as a person. You just look, you just look different and you should never change the way you are just because people are telling you to. Stay strong. Stay strong. You know, the only thing you can do when people don't understand your disability is either try and explain it to them, which is not going to work in most cases, uh, but stay strong, stay true to yourself. Don't let people get to you. Try and be the best you can be for you. If you could ask the people watching this film a question, what would you ask them? I would ask them, do you realise what damage you have done to people who have had, who have had the disability? And, and, yeah, who had the disability? Yeah. You imagine your children going to school and purposely being picked on for who they are. They're coming back and then one day when you're sending them to school and they're on their hands and knees begging and crying not to send them to school only because people pick on them. You ask yourself, would you like your children to do that? How would they feel if every time they went out to have fun with their friends they had to deal with worrying if they were going to be set upon or attacked even? I, supp I suppose the question is, I mean, how would they feel if they had to constantly watch over their shoulder for somebody bigger str and stronger and harder than them who was just about to give them a good slap around the head and, you know, would they be on edge? I'm sure they would be on edge. It doesn't matter who's standing around. They'll never see it the way you do. They'll never know the hurt that you've walked away with. Trying to be invisible is not easy. I want you to think how you would feel if you had to do that, trying to be invisible at all times. How would you feel if you were singled out? For no reason, just on the way you look or like the hair you've got or the piercings you've got. And like, a lot of the time just be like, you know, been a bit kind of just feeling unsafe. No one should have to do that really, just because of the way they look. <laughs>